Hello there. <laughs> Let me make some final adjustments. In case anyone was wondering what my final adjustments are, I'm wearing some slippers. There was a fold in the <laughs> insert of my slippers. This one's okay, as you'll see. But one thing I do not want is a fold in the insert of my slippers. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, FNCS. Hello. Good afternoon, Josh Hogran. But it is not afternoon where I am from. I think I saw a friendly neighborhood star with two R's joining. I'm going to take off a lid off my pretzel jug and top my coffee cup up off with it. So it stays nice and hot. Hello, Ronald Carter. Hello, Josh Hogrand. I wonder if Sunday at like 11.30 is a good time to go live. <laughs> and is this coffee with Ken? Or is it stay at home with Ken? It could be either. And I actually debated as I was uh, about to go live this morning uh, what to call it. Hello, Robert Patrick. How are you? But uh, I went with coffee with Ken. I felt stay at home with Ken. Wasn't really anything more special. I happened to be staying at home today. Today's a Sunday. That's one of my stay at home days where a day where my wife's at her job and she's kicking butt. By the way, she had a record day yesterday. Um, but uh, anyway, for anybody that's been watching, uh, actually just good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is either Coffee with Ken or Stay at Home with Ken or whatever you'd like to call it, really whatever you'd like to call it. I started a show called Coffee with Ken. Uh, it'll be five years ago in June. Uh, it was at a time when I was struggling in a lot of ways, living in a dark apartment, had a bad self-image, a horrible inner voice, uh, was struggling in a ton of ways, was drinking and smoking every day. And uh, it feels funny, honestly, saying that because I haven't done either in like two and a half years. And it just feels really good. Uh, but anyway, I started going live. Um, again, it's coming up on five years ago on a different social media platform. Happy Sunday to you, Libby. On a different social media platform, people started watching. I think I was a little more direct. I think I have a positive vibe or a good energy about me, uh, but I it was also very free to share my struggles and my anxieties and my stressors and my troubles and my sadness uh, in a way that seemed to resonate with the audience. And people started watching. A couple of years back, I had a friend watching and I was doing a lengthy uh, discussion on uh, drinking and how I'd used it to soothe my anxiety and as a crutch to get through my days. Uh, for so many years, and his daughter was watching as well, and she was like a psychology major or something, and said, wow, this is good stuff. He should post on TikTok. So here I am, two and a half years later, uh, two years and three months later, uh, going live to you on a Sunday morning on uh, TikTok. So again, good morning to you. Uh, for those that have been watching a while, for those that have been watching a while, in, Jimmy says, in Pensacola, vape shops are opening on what seems to be every corner. Is a vape shop nicotine or cigarettes or anything goes? In Illinois, uh, uh, it's, marijuana has been legalized for a bunch of, for probably three or four years now. And if that's what you're talking about, do I ever get the Sunday scaries, Ken? Brad Smith, I don't even know what the Sunday scaries are. So I'm going to have to say, no, I never get the Sunday scaries. I never get, unless it's just something you get after having a, uh, a bad nightmare, because I'll have nightmares. And again, when I was drinking every day and smoking every day, I didn't have nightmares. And I never got the deep sleep that's so important uh, for you. And uh, now I have very vivid dreams and detailed dreams, and some honestly scare me because they're dreams of random things or random people from somewhere in my life. And uh, sometimes they can be scary, and I can always wake up. But Scott Maxfield says he always gets the Sunday scaries uh, ahead of work on Monday and the rest of the work week. Okay. Uh, Brad Smith says anxiety setting is on in, setting in on Sunday ahead of work on Monday and the rest of the work week. Hello, Miss Hampton. Uh Okay, uh, I don't work, a, I haven't worked a regular 
nine to five, Monday through Friday job uh, since about year 2000 for about 24 years. I remember at that time, uh, I was a stockbroker from like 1990 to 2000, roughly. I was working downtown. I didn't love what I did at all. I disliked what I did. And I, I think looking back on it, I'm kind of ashamed of what I did. And uh, come Sundays, I would uh, uh, probably not look forward uh, to going into work on Monday at all. And uh, one sec. Hey, William, can you shut that? Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry. Kid's coming up from the basement. So on Sundays, I'm sure I didn't go, like, look, in, look forward to going into work at all on Mondays. I uh, didn't like what I did, didn't feel I was being productive, didn't feel I was contributing to the world, and honestly felt like all I was doing was trying to generate as much commissions for as big of a paycheck as I could being a stockbroker. Uh, well, user just said what made me ashamed of what I did at my career Again, I just lost clients' money over time. Uh, again, I was a stockbroker. It was hard selling over the phone, uh, cold calling, uh, calling a stack of cards every day, uh, trying to find individuals who are wi were willing to send uh, large chunks of money to a guy they'd never met uh, <clears throat> to buy an investment they'd never uh, heard of <laughs> over the phone. It seems crazy. Happy Sunday to you, Raul. Hope I have a day filled with happiness and blessings. I was not the wolf of Wall Street, uh, but looking back on it, there's so much true to the wolf of Wall Street, Boiler Room, and Wall Street. If you kind of did a combination of those three movies, uh, that's roughly what I did. It was, uh, you know, the wolf of Wall Street made a ton more money than I did, but I made a pretty good amount of money. And they sold, you know, lesser companies and penny stocks, and that's not what I did. Uh, and I worked at some big companies, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers and Oppenheimer, which were all big companies, uh, I don't know, 30 years ago. And I don't know if any of them still exist anymore, which is crazy. And uh, uh, what have you. Um, but I don't think the world misses any of those companies at all, to be honest with you. I don't think the world misses those companies at all. And... Uh, uh, yeah, hold on one sec. But um, Tavis Grows asked if I'm retired now. No, I'm not retired. I uh, am a stay. I don't know what I would do even if I was retired or even if I was financially in a situation where I could be retired. Um, uh, again, I was a stockbroker for 10 years in the 90s. I became a realtor in 2005. Did that till about a year ago. And... Uh, uh, got out of that. Again, I didn't love that either, to be honest with you. It was also, I didn't feel I was offering any value to the world. I was constantly looking for my next client, the next buyer of, or seller of a home. And at the end of the day, I didn't think I had really much value uh, to the uh, transaction at all. I might've saved my clients a little bit of money if they were buying and gotten them a little more if they were selling, but they didn't know it. They wouldn't have known it. Uh, and really they I felt they graded you. You know, I had a friendly smile and a demeanor that they seemed to like. But outside of that, I don't think I really offered a lot of value. So I left real estate uh, about a year back. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that feels real good. Right now, I'm a stay-at-home dad four days a week. And I'm also an aspiring full-time content creator. Again, I started this show four and a half years ago. Uh, I talk about anxiety, mental health, sobriety, substance abuse, gambling, the markets, real estate, uh, financial ups and downs, relationships. I got a lot of highs and lows in my life, a lot of experiences, and uh, seems I have an ability, an ability uh, to share them, uh, uh, to share them. Tavis wants to know, well, first of all, Jimmy wants to know, do I keep in touch with any of the Target employees? No, not one. <laughs> I knew some nice people there, but it was never a, uh, it was a job. It was a job where you'd go, you'd get your paycheck. You didn't work real closely with anybody. Uh, you worked, I worked in my aisle, the cereal aisle, nine ten, And, uh, you know, there's three people, man, in the grocery section or four, maybe at a time, stocking shelves, but they're each working in their own aisle. There's not a, I didn't find it as a lot of teamwork. And uh, it was an interesting experience. 
Nice wants to know how much do I make on TikTok? I really don't make any money on TikTok, but thank you for asking. Hello, Sandman. Hello, Dylan. And uh, thank you for laughing. Tavis Groves wants to know how much money would I would allow me to retire? Well, see, Tavis, I think that might be the wrong question. Uh, I don't know what I would, why I would want to retire. What does retirement mean? And I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know what the answer to that. What would I do if I was retired? Garden? Golf? You know, <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do, and I was planning to be a realtor till, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, till I <laughs> drop dead, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Tavis says I would travel. Yeah, <laughs> traveling's fine. You bring yourself and your own issues with you. I think a lot of people think uh, the grass is always greener on the other side. And I've moved a couple times in the early 90s. I thought California would be a perfect place, like the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> and I moved there, and I go, huh. You know, I still brought my issues with me. Yeah, the beach is nice. The weather's nice. The bikinis are nice. Uh, but I was still me, uh, just with a better tan. And honestly, I miss the Midwest. Uh, sure, I'd like to go on a few trips. I might like to visit Italy or Greece or go to my uh, mother's home country of Scotland. Uh, and uh, uh, would enjoy that. But, you know, it's not a great calling for me. If I was to be filling out a Match.com profile, I wouldn't say I love to travel or I live for travel or anything like that. Uh, I really enjoy doing this and uh, talking to you guys and hopefully, in, you know, maybe inspiring or educating or keeping somebody company or, uh, you know, sharing my experiences and hopefully touching somebody that needs, uh, that's been on a similar path, whether it's about anxiety or depression or financial or uh, relationship wise or uh, what have you. Rick's two cups down. Rick, you always say you're two cups down. You always say you're two cups down. I'm going to have, by the way, for those that have been watching a while, and we got some names I see, uh, see popping up a lot, uh, you know, and I'm excited. There's some news about this cup of coffee. This is not just a show about me talking, although that's kind of the backdrop. And whenever conversation runs dry, I'll take a swig of coffee. Sometimes I'll show you. I'll do my show outside. I'll show you what's behind me or where I'm sitting. It's not that exciting. It's uh, the back of my kitchen behind me, and you don't need to see that. Uh, but anyway, for those who have been watching a while, you know it's also a show about me uh, sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me, and I am... So excited to take my first sip. I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, you have a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Makes me happy. It's the uh, Starbucks caramel. We were almost out of coffee. We had a little of a, uh, a mid-roast or a, a, what's it called? Not light, not dark, mid-roast? Medium roast coffee. Uh, that I wasn't too thrilled about. We ran out of our vanilla Starbucks today, so I ran to the store, picked up some hazelnut, picked up some caramel, and I'd never had the Starbucks caramel before, and it's nice. It's just uh, enough flavor to make it interesting. We were enjoying the vanilla for the last few days, and again, that was nice too, not overwhelming flavors, uh, but I do long for the pumpkin spice or the uh, cinnamon dolce that have stronger flavors uh, that I've you know, grown so fond of over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Somebody asked what, John asked, what am I doing for work now? Uh, I stay at home with my kids four days a week and I'm honestly trying to develop coffee with Ken into something bigger. And I don't even know what bigger means. And I appreciate the 19 people that are watching right now. Uh, but I share a lot of these videos and I always clip them into shorts and reels and TikToks and post them on various social media uh, networks, although only 20 people are watching now, there's going to be probably five or 10 videos cut out of this one that might be seen 10,000 times. And uh, that's exciting. And I get messages that say, hey, I so appreciate you sharing your experience about this, this or that. And uh, it just feels real good. Uh, where's my cute stepdaughter? She's up in her room sleeping. 
Uh, my oldest stepson had a sleepover last night, and it's so funny. It's so funny because he had two of his buddies stay over and they slept in the basement. And I came down at about 5.30 like I usually do and there was a half a pot of coffee brewing and I heard noise downstairs and I went down and checked. Uh, one of the boys was asleep on the floor in our basement and there were two mattresses there that I would have chosen, but he was on the floor and the other two were playing video games. I asked him how long the coffee had been made and they'd obviously been up all night, which I think is just so funny. And, uh, uh, but I remember back to when I was a kid sleeping over at a buddy's house, uh, playing in television for anybody out there of a certain age. And I'm 55 years old. Uh, I grew up before video games, uh, Pong came out in the seventies and Atari came out right around 1980 or something like that. And in television came out soon after. And I remember playing sea battle and football and in television, baseball and all these games there's a, a car racing game that I liked a lot uh, on uh, in television. I remember spending the whole, staying up all night with our friends playing video games, and it seems so crazy. It seems so crazy. What do they say? Youth is wasted on the young. Uh, Brad Smith asks if my ex-wife watches my show. Uh, well, that's a very confusing question. I know you don't intend it to be. Uh, I've been divorced twice. I'm reconciling with my second wife. We realize uh, we always struggled, uh, you know, getting along. I think a lot of people struggle getting along. And we're both very strong personality people and can be intense at times. Uh, and we certainly had our share of issues, but we have certainly had our share of love. And uh, we also have two beautiful children that deserve our best effort at uh, creating a, uh, the best life possible for them. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. My first ex-wife, I think, does watch the show as well. Uh, I don't think she's on TikTok, really, or watching live. But uh, she has some coffee with Ken mugs at her house. And my daughters both have coffee with Ken mugs. And I think they do check in on the show from time to time. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So <laughs> I try my best not to disparage my ex-wives because they might be watching. <laughs> so anyway, let's have a little more coffee. Mm. It's Sunday. It's just before noon. I think it's still football season. I think we have some football games. Again, it's so weird for me. I've been on my own little... Uh, Sandman loves his French vanilla. Well, cheers to you, Sandman. Uh, I'm loving my caramel. Mm. Again, I've been on my own little journey for the last four and a half years. Uh, I've cut out almost all live TV, which feels so strange to me. I left the real estate business, I stopped drinking and smoking, and uh, I poured my passion and uh, working on myself and uh, uh, trying to be the best I can be and, uh, uh, I don't know, working on this show and, again, hopefully sharing my experiences uh, uh, to help somebody else because I know, and again, from doing this for so long, uh, I posted a video this morning just me walking and saying, hey there, because that's like how I like to start my walking videos. Talk for about a minute. I don't know really what I said other than kind of describe the weather, said I heard some birds chirping and said I was excited about my day and I wish you a great day. And I got so many people watching that video already, being touched by it and saying they needed it. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that are kind of lonely or struggling with anxiety or struggling with mental health. And mental health's always been an issue in my family. I won't go into specifics, but let me tell you, it has. And uh, again, I started opening up about my own issues uh, four and a half years ago. And uh, it's just made me feel a heck of a lot better. Lisa Smith asked, will there be a special live of us renewing our vows? Lisa Smith, that sounds like something out of a soap opera. I don't think we're going to have a special live show of us renewing our vows. Or it sounds like The Bachelor, where I'll give her a rose and she may or excuse me, I won't take it. <laughs> no, there will be no uh, special live of us renewing our vows. <laughs> I so appreciate the question. That might be funny. But it would be very soap opera-esque. And I'd have to change my name from Ken to Shane. 
<laughs> some more soap opera name. I <laughs> have to get a real good looking actor to play me. Uh, will we ever get remarried? I don't know, Vanessa. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm Right now, I don't see a reason. Uh, we're doing the best we can every day. And uh, I'll tell you what, the divorce process, and I've been through it twice, was hell. Uh, it was so painful and so ugly. And <clears throat> two people that probably still love each other but can't figure a way to get along hire lawyers, high-paid lawyers to go at each other and make each other's lives miserable. And uh, uh, those were some of the hardest times of my life. And uh, because of that, I, I, don't, I just can't imagine much reason to have the government get involved in my relationship going forward. Uh, because it happened twice and those relationships fell apart both times and both times it was hell uh, to sever our ties. And uh, I think we could have gone our separate ways a lot better off and everybody could have been taken care of better and the kids would have gotten more child support and we would have all been financially in a world better place uh, had we not had to go through the divorce process. Uh, I understand whatever, there's got to be laws uh, but for me, I think the thought of uh, getting the government involved in my uh, relationship uh, seems unnecessary. Yeah, no, divorce is hell. Divorce is hell. I do not like conflict at all. And what I found even scarier about divorce, uh, I was more afraid of my own attorney than I was of my ex-wife or my ex-wife's attorney. <coughs> Excuse me. Because anytime I called or asked anything or emailed or tried to get a hold of them, it cost me a few hundred bucks. And, you know, <laughs> that wasn't a time. Neither of those were times where I could afford a few hundred bucks for them to answer a question. And I remember talking to my sister and telling her my situation and her always going, well, what does your attorney say? And I go, I can't even afford to talk to him. <laughs> I can't afford to talk to him. You know, and uh, just getting that, you know, you give them earnest money and uh, you, the fear of it going away was so immense and having to send them more or else he'd just stop working for you. Uh, I watched an in interesting movie last night. I forget what it's called. It was called The uh, the Report, but the word, there was a word in the middle and I won't say it lest uh, social media doesn't like it, uh, but it was uh, blacked out, if you will, the word in the middle and uh, had a line through it so you couldn't read it. Uh, but it was a report, kind of a true story uh, about the CIA's involvement in interrogation of witnesses shortly after 9-11. And I thought it was really eye-opening, not totally surprising to me. Uh, came out in 2019, there was some stars you know. Uh, again, I think it was based on a true story, I don't know how much of it was true. Some of the, I mean, the politicians they were talking about were true and uh, what have you, but it was really kind of interesting and eye-opening. And again, I wasn't surprised. Uh, that was a scary time. And I'm not surprised there were scary things done to people that some of which probably deserved it and some of which uh, uh, probably didn't deserve it. And uh, the thought of it was disturbing. And I watched it with my wife and she was shocked that it went on in this country. And I'm going, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not. And uh, yeah, hello, Combat Clock. I'm talking about a movie uh, that I watched last night and it was called The Blank Report. I won't use the middle word lest it's a, a, a word that's not permitted by social media, honestly, but it's treating prisoners very badly report. <laughs> Uh, yeah, treating them very badly. Uh, and uh, it was eye-opening, again, about the CIA's treatment of various prisoners captured shortly after 9-11. And it was kind of disturbing because you watch things that you've heard about and read about in the newspaper. Uh, yeah, but it was very unpleasant uh, what went on and uh, the way humans were treated. And, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are, and I'm walking a line of being political, and I don't want to do that. Uh, 
But I hate to think <clears throat> that our country would treat human beings that way, you know, even the worst of the worst people. Uh, I'd like to think we're better than that, and I hope that we are. So I'll leave you with that on that. But anyway, I'm drinking my caramel Starbucks coffee and uh, enjoying it and feel so good going live. I wasn't really planning on it. I hadn't gone live in a few days. Honestly, I was kind of in a funk for a couple of days. I was feeling stressed out, feeling a little sad. I uh, was ju- wrestling with some thoughts in my head. And over the last three days, I talked to my sister a few days ago and she goes, well, just focus on what you can control. And I thought that was really good advice. And I've been doing that and I find myself sleeping better and putting less pressure on myself and feeling better and feeling happier and more able to make bacon and uh, eggs for the whole family today and clean up the kitchen. (laughs) Although I'm not totally done cleaning. (laughs) But I got my two little ones up there asleep. They've been up there asleep for the last, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes. Uh, Kept them up a little not quite. I like to keep them up till about noon my time, uh, but they were both up at about 545 this morning and we were downstairs uh, having our snacks. A lot of times I'll do this video with a fireplace behind me. It's on my TV. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it's hard. I got a two and a half year old and a one year old uh, keeping them content watching a fireplace on TV. They both prefer it to be Sesame Street or Miss Rachel or some show like that. And, uh, but I was able to keep them entertained and cuddle with them and play on the floor and give them their yogurt and give them their cereal and, uh, enjoy my morning with them. Uh, but come 11, 15 or so, they were getting kind of tired and, uh, just felt nice to lay them down, uh, put them down for their nap on a Sunday afternoon. Hopefully they'll stay asleep for two or three hours, allow me to clean the house a little bit, edit some videos, uh, post some videos, hopefully get new subscribers and grow Coffee with Ken into whatever Coffee with Ken is going to grow into. Uh, I want to touch on something real quickly. I think something I struggle with a little bit. I don't think we should track our, I know I shouldn't track my progress nearly as closely as I do. I watch the number of viewers or the number of subscribers or the number of likes or the weight on the scale or the you know, how my body looks after working out way too closely. Because anything you do in life that means something, or most things you do in life that mean something, takes some time. And I started working out at a gym, it'll be six months ago, sometime mid next month, and feel great. I'm consistent at it. I do it three times a week. I feel strong. Uh, But if I would have to watch my progress on the scale or in the mirror, on a day-by-day basis, I would have gone crazy and given up a long time ago. And the same is true with content creation or social media. If you watch the number of subscribers you get on a day-by-day basis, and I do, (laughs) hard lesson for me to learn, Uh, it takes forever to grow. And no matter what number you hit, you always want it to be way more. And if I would just you know, check it once a month or something like that, I'd go, hey, I picked up a few hundred new subscribers. But watching every hour and going, huh, nobody new subscribed or looking at yourself in the mirror after every time you work out or, I don't know, you know, <laughs> evaluating you work where you are uh, too frequently. I know it's been a long-term problem of mine. And uh, uh, I'm trying to take time where I don't have my phone and I can't keep track and not weigh myself on the scale as often. And uh, when I had the shower after a workout, uh, not look at myself because I uh, worked out, what, what, what day is it? Two days ago and I had a great, great workout. <laughs> and I'm walking to the shower. I go to a Planet Fitness not too far from here. And I looked at myself and I literally, I think I said aloud, I don't know, it's hard for me to tell if it's just a thought or if I'm actually saying it. I'm going, huh, still flab around the midriff. <laughs> and I go, yeah, ease up on yourself. You know, it takes time. Uh, Keep working out, keep at it, and keep doing the right things. RJ, hey, thank you for hopping on. And uh, thank you for the hat and mustache. I appreciate that. And Carson Green, thank you for hopping on. And thank you all for joining. If there's anybody new out there, please subscribe to my page. I have a lot of fun going live. Uh, Often we'll go live after I put my kids down for their nap uh, four days a week. Uh, On the other three days, I usually go live uh, after my workout and... uh, 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 
you know, kind of enjoy it. And I think people generally think I got a good energy or a positive vibe. And even if I'm struggling, there's been times I've been crying. Uh, somehow I'll manage to cry with a smile as well. And <laughs> I don't know what that means. Probably means I got some mental health issues, but we all do. It's all shades of gray when it comes to <laughs> our mental health and our craziness. So, uh, yeah, I'll drink a little more coffee. Mm. Anyway, it's Sunday afternoon. I don't know what else I have for you today, but I do appreciate you guys hopping on. I do appreciate, uh, it's a Starbucks caramel, RJ. Never had it before, this pot. And it's kind of nice. It's a understated taste of caramel. We had the Starbucks vanilla for a while. I ran to the store this morning and picked up some hazelnut and uh, some caramel and uh, enjoying it. But uh, yeah, hello, Ian Wilson. and Thank you all for joining again. And uh, again, I do appreciate you guys for watching, for sharing in my journey, for following along in my story, for watching my videos, for liking my content, uh, for commenting or just watching quietly if that's what you're doing today. And it is just about noon, so we'll call it Sunday afternoon. And I hope your weekend's going well. And I hope you had a great, great week behind you. And I hope you're excited about the week ahead, but not looking too forward uh, and uh, you're doing your best to live in the moment because my mind is often forward and sometimes even behind. And uh, those are a place of anxiety and regret too often. And I think if we can live in the moment, uh, I don't know, life's a little better. So uh, I'm going to have one more sip and enjoy it as much as I can. Mm. Mm. Not as hot as I'd like, but I'll promise you this. my <laughs> I got a hot two or three cups left over there. I'm looking forward to getting at. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for joining on this Sunday. I so appreciate you. I hope you're having a uh, great, great day. Again, you're enjoying, uh, you had a great week. Uh, you're enjoying your weekend. You're feeling good. You're loving yourself. Uh, you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.